It's Tuesday. That means we go around the ECHL and an honor to have one of my longtime buddies, my best buddy in the league, uh, the voice of the Wichita Thunder, the only voice that the Wichita Thunder has ever needed. Ladies and gentlemen, a graduate of Penn State University and a huge Chicago Cubs fan, the one and only Jason Delamere Mells. Wait, what did you just call me? I don't know. It, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> How are you? I'm well. Don't tell that to Joel. He's in the office next to me, and he, he was voice of the team for a number of years. Well, you're, you're my buddy, and uh, <laughs> I, I appreciate a longtime friendship. Um, this is a guy who's opened his, his house up to me, um, traveling a few times because we had too many players and needed a place to stay, and so... There have been a couple of times I've crashed on the Mal's couch. So, you know, that's that's what a great guy he is. And his Wichita Thunder have had a great season. They've been the best team in the West for uh, the majority of the year. Uh, I know it's been a difficult year calling games, but how much fun have you had uh, calling games for this team this year? Because they, you guys have won a lot of games. Yeah, it's it's been a, a challenge, but I think – you know, th this has been a fun team to be able to be a part of for, for this season. Tommy, uh, you know, this team has struggled ever since the 2012-13 finals to A, f have a winning season and be able to make the playoffs. Just one playoff appearance since then. And this is only the second time in the ECHL since the Thunder joined the league that uh, the Thunder had been able to make the playoffs. So, you know, it's been a pleasure to be a part of. It's been a lot of fun being around head coach Bruce Ramsey. It's, it's almost night and day from the previous two coaches in terms of the atmosphere. And it's, it's something that has been very special. And I hope that at least for our fans that we can find a way to make a deep playoff run. It'd be a lot of fun to, to play you guys in the playoffs once again. Like I said, I, it's, it's been difficult since that 12-13 finals against Allen uh, something that I sometimes try and put in the back of my mind and uh, try and forget about. <laughs> and people forget, not in Wichita, but <clears throat> around the league, that you guys went to the finals twice. Didn't you play Fort Wayne as well? Yeah, it was back-to-back -back seasons. We lost in five games against Fort Wayne. That was a, a tough one to swallow because we had two of our better players get injured in the first two games at our building and then ended up having a tough go at it in Fort Wayne against the Comets got one of our better players back Alex Bure in game five but just you know we were in too deep of a hole in that series to try and make a comeback it, you, don't forget you're talking to a guy here that I'm a Bills fan so I was a part of a losing Super Bowl team I say that as a fan because I've been a fan since birth right back to back to back to back <laughs> Four straight Super Bowl losses, and you know, you know what Bill stands for, right? Boy, I love losing on Sunday, and don't don't think I haven't heard that a few times in my lifetime. But you know, the good thing is, uh, you know, you can move on, and you guys obviously have got, had a great team this year. A lot of good young players. Talk about your young players, including uh, Jay Dickman, who I would imagine would be, uh, you know, one of the uh, leading candidates for Rookie of the Year. You know, Jay's been an interesting story for us this season, Tommy. We, we picked him up at the deadline last year. He was a rookie last season with Indy, but he didn't qualify uh, because he didn't play enough games. And right. when we picked him up, he might have finished the season with enough games to be a rookie last year. But because of the pandemic and the, the rest of the season being canceled, uh, those last seven games, he ended up qualifying this year and and he's been quite a story for us this season uh i think he came in a little bit of a i wouldn't say a question mark but maybe a wild card uh, and and with his size and his work ethic he's been able to find a, a spot on a line with anthony beauregard and stephen fournier which has certainly helped his production but uh, you know, we've we've had a couple of injuries throughout the course of the season, and he's still been pretty consistent. So it, it's been a lot of fun to watch him. Braden Watts, I think, has been another interesting story. Over the last month, he's got 11 points out of the 30 points that he scored. He came in a little bit inconsistent, had a hard time finding a place in the lineup, but 
uh, Brayton is really coming to his own as of late. And then Dean Stewart has probably been one of our best free agent acquisitions. He was picked up early in the season as a defenseman has really come on strong. He actually has missed the last couple of games because he's been on loan to the Bakersfield Condors for their playoff run in the Pacific division with the American hockey league, but hopefully we'll get him back here this week. This is Jason Malisey, voice of the Wichita thunder. <clears throat> and you've been the voice of the thunder all but one year. There was, was it Steve Schuster? I'm trying to... Actually, it was four uh -huh. years. I left from 2007 to 2011, but Steve was the broadcaster at that time. Yes. Yeah. Cause the only time we ever played, you know, in the old barn, uh, you weren't there and I didn't know you at that point, but, uh, quickly did the next season and, and the rest is history. But, uh, you know, it, it, you've been around a long time. Obviously, fans know you here and Alan just from the, the great rivalry between the Americans and the Thunder over the years uh, in looking forward to the playoffs. Hard to believe that we've these two teams, we've been around for a long time together, that we've only met one time in the playoffs. Yeah, that, that, that seems to be somewhat crazy. I thought the two teams would face each other in 2011, 2012, and – then you guys get knocked out in the first round. I believe that was Texas, maybe? We did. We, uh, we, we were actually, we ended up carrying it to, you know, a sixth game. But, yeah, that was a tough series. And that, uh, unfortunately, um, you know, that would uh, end Dwight Mullen's reign uh, in, in, in Allen because he was let go at the end of the season. Uh, we were lucky enough to find Steve Martinson to come in. Uh, that next year and obviously we know his history and what he what he's been able to do here but yeah it just seems hard to believe that over the years that the, these two teams would only have met one time in the postseason I had looked it up and thought wow that's right only one time well again we had a, a tough go of it for a number of years I think we missed the playoffs four straight seasons before that second year of Malcolm Catman's run where we ended up playing Colorado in the playoffs and lost to them in six games. But, you know, the, the, the team has had a hard time of being consistent, finding a way to, you know, to win games and getting into the postseason. So if there is a possibility of these two teams playing each other in the first or second round, I, I think it would be great for the rivalry, which is one of the best in the league anyways, but yeah. also great for the league because these two teams are close. They don't like each other. <laughs> it, it seems like, Tommy, it doesn't matter who's on the roster. It just carries over year to year. Yeah, you're right. It does. Um, and, and people know, I mean, if you're a hockey fan, you know, I know our fans know, you, your fans know, you know, there's just that extra vibe whenever you guys are in the building. And, and I talked about that, you know, with some of our new staff this year. And we've got, a, you know, obviously a completely different uh, roster in our front office than we did you know, when the uh, 2013 uh, President's Cup Finals was around in Allen. But um, I told him, I said, just wait till Wichita's in the building. It's a completely different, you know, setting. The fans are into it. You know, your fans come down for games. Uh, it really has turned into a great rivalry. I don't know how you guys feel about who your uh, big rival is. But for us, for sure, uh, it's Wichita. Well, no doubt. It's always been Allen. Uh, I think there's always talk among the fans of the big three, <clears throat> Kansas City and Tulsa, but there's just a different level of intensity when the teams play each other. And, you know, the history of some of the players uh, being on these rosters, you look at Dyson Stevenson, for instance, who spent two seasons here. He was with you guys before. He was the captain of the Thunder for two years, and now he's back in Allen. And and that certainly adds another level to uh, to the rivalry. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see how the game turns out uh, on Wednesday. All right. I'm going to, because you're a math genius and, and your Penn state, your Penn state diploma will tell us that. Um, have you had a chance to break down and do the math here on, on all the scenarios? And, you know, there is still a chance that the Americans can take the top spot. Uh, do you want to break that down for us? Well, you're asking the wrong person to to consider me a math guru, but in talking with the league, <clears throat> my understanding is if the Thunder win tomorrow, no matter if it's regulation or past uh, regulation, past 60 minutes, uh, Wichita would take the top spot. 
if we lose both games and you guys win all three, I'm about 90% certain that you guys can take first place. So uh, tomorrow's game is a huge game for both teams. And uh, even if there wasn't first place on the line, I think it would still have that playoff intensity in the building. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're right. That's, that's what I was told too. Um, so yeah, tomorrow night's game, it essentially is a playoff game for both teams because both teams would like that top spot. Uh, not that saying going to Utah would be an easy uh, ride for anyone because, you know, they got hot the last half of the season. They're playing as well as anybody right now. So that's not going to be easy, but I think you want that top spot overall if you can. Uh, and so, yes, tomorrow night, as we record this on Tuesday, Wednesday night's game should just be a Wichita Allen dandy. I don't think any of these teams that have made the field in the West are going to be an easy opponent. I mean, you know, for, for us, we've only played Fort Wayne twice or excuse me, three <clears throat> times. And, you know, they've got a, a pretty loaded roster. Utah has got a bunch of guys down from the Colorado Eagles. Uh, they got just uh, got Travis Barron back. Who's been a really good player for them. We have not played Utah in, in a couple of weeks. And I know you guys saw them, what, maybe a week two, week or two ago, and they've got a yeah. really good goaltender that we have not faced yet. So any one of these opponents that uh, these series in the first or second round, I think are going to be really good hockey to watch. I, I know you've done your math on this, so I'm not, I'm not even going to worry about it. I, I know that you're already going to say, yes, Tommy, I knew this. But just by chance that you guys ended up playing Fort Wayne in that first round, the Chicago Cubs are home that weekend and you would have a Saturday off in that series and they play the Cardinals. Just throw that out there for you. <laughs> are, are you suggesting that I need to make the road trip? I'm suggesting that you should be on that road trip. Um, knowing your Cubs love your Cubs loyalty and Oh yeah. You have a Saturday off in Fort Wayne. It's a two hour and 58 minute drive from the hotel to Wrigley field. Well, let's so not forget would, my parents still live in Chicago. I, I would definitely consider going, but, um, yeah. you know, it, it's going to be difficult because my daughter still has softball tournaments almost every weekend. So yeah. um, I, it, I'm going to have to visit with the staff and visit with uh, her mom and, and everything like that to be able to make that trip. But yeah, I, I, I'd love to be in the building. It, it's, uh, as you know, a lot easier to see what's going on and, and call the game and get that feel for what uh, what's happening in the arena but it's all gonna we're, we're, it's gonna be kind of a wait and see mode because that's a, a quick turnaround for me and the only way i'd be able to make that happen is if i drove up hey what what do i have to do to get you down here for tomorrow night's game <laughs> I, I, do i need to pay pay for your flights what i mean i want you to come down for tomorrow night's game hopefully it would not be the last opportunity that i would get to see you this year, but what would it take to get you down here tomorrow night? We can have that conversation off air. How about that? Oh, okay. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, he is the great voice and I mean, a, a great friend, uh, definitely somebody that I uh, trust. And um, I said, he's become my best buddy in this league. Uh, he does a hell of a job for the Wichita Thunder, not only uh, doing a great broadcast, but also he just kicks butt out there in the community selling sponsorships for the uh, Thunder uh, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Jason Oliver Males. Let, let's just say that we've become such good friends that he watches Full House with. My okay. Daughter, okay, you don't need to say that. You don't need. <laughs> you don't need to throw that out on here. Nobody needs to know what I watch on Netflix. Okay. <laughs> Males, as always, you're the best man. Thanks for doing this. Hey, my pleasure. Good luck uh, tomorrow, and we'll talk off air. Okay. Same here. Good luck to you too. Jason Mouse around the ECHL.